Good morning, Junior 4. How are you? I hope you are fine. Today we are going to read Christmas Carol as we reach chapter 3 and 4. Have a nice day. Before we read, I'm going to uh, have a, quest a question to you. How did he understand, or Ebenezer Scrooge, how do you understand what he lost? Well, great. By looking at his uh, old girlfriend who lived ha happy with her family. Or we can say by looking at the past. That's very good. Okay, now let's listen. Chapter 3. The Second Ghost Later, Scrooge woke up suddenly. He looked around his bedroom. There was nobody there. He went to the door of his living room. Come in, Ebenezer Scrooge, said a voice. He opened the door and saw something very strange. The room looked so different. The walls of the room were covered with Christmas trees and there was a big fire burning. The floor and table were hidden by the most delicious kinds of Christmas foods you can imagine. There was holly all around the room and the green leaves were bright with the light from the fire. Sitting on top of all the food was a happy young giant holding a burning torch which lit the room. Okay, now let me ask you he a question. He was wearing a... Let me ask you a question here. Describe what he saw when he entered the room. Describe what he saw when he entered the room. Well, great. He, when he opened the room, he looked around. It was different. The walls were covered with Christmas trees and there was a big fire burning and the floor uh, uh, were hidden by a lot of food. So the, 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 the setting was amazing and happy. And the way he felt at that moment is affected by uh, the setting. His mood was very uh, delightful and happy. Let's continue. Long green dress with white fur at the bottom. He had curly brown hair and a hat made of holly. Come in, come in, said the giant. I'm the ghost of Christmas presents. If you've something to teach me, said Scrooge, take me anywhere you want. I learnt a lot from the first ghost. Touch my dress, said the ghost. Scrooge did. And soon the trees, the food and the room had disappeared. Okay, now this is the ghost of uh, Christmas present. Okay, he asked him, uh, now if we describe the man, he wore, uh, he was giant and uh, he had a burning torch uh, and he was wearing a long green dress. All of these things are description of the man sitting there. Now he's going to take him to somewhere else. We're going to see what is the first place he's going to. Scrooge found they were walking in a London street on Christmas morning. The shops were full of lovely things to eat. Everyone there was happy. The ghost took him to the Cratchit's house, where they were preparing their small Christmas dinner. Scrooge watched as the poor family ate one goose and some potatoes and a very small Christmas pudding. They were still as happy as if they had eaten a king's dinner. Scrooge looked at Tiny Tim, the youngest child, who was ill and could not walk. Will he be here next Christmas? he asked. With help, replied the ghost. Okay, now this is the second place they went to, Bob Cratchit. Who is Bob Cratchit? Yes, he is the man who worked for Scrooge. He's a very, very poor man, and he had a son who couldn't walk, or uh, he was, let's say, an, an, an ill person. 
uh, and they were so happy with a little goose and little potato, even if they are uh, poor and they have uh, a little amount of food, they were so, so happy at that time. So does money mean something to them? Well, let's say no. The most important things is that they are together. Even the mom asked and said, uh, or th sorry, uh, Scrooge asked and said, uh, will he be here? Now he's asking about this person. This is the most important. He didn't ask if he had money or not. So imagine uh, being around a family or with you surrounded by family means a lot. It's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing from God. They left the Cratchits' poor but happy house and walked through the snowy streets of London. Everyone was going out to evening parties with their friends and families. Suddenly, they were in a cold, grey, empty place. Scrooge and the ghost looked through the window of a small house. Inside, there was a big family in a small room. They were all singing Christmas songs together. They were very happy. Who are they? asked Scrooge. They are poor miners, said the ghost. People who work hard inside the earth we live on. Now, uh, these miners, even though they are poor and the house looks sad, but they are still singing. So what matters is that they are surrounded by their family the love of their family. So that's why they are happy. As simple as that, surrounded by loved ones. Now let's see what's going to happen in the, uh, for, for Scrooge after that. The ghost took Scrooge back to London, to Scrooge's nephew, Fred's house, where there was a big party. Fred was telling everyone about his visit to his uncle. When I said Merry Christmas to him, he replied, Humbug, said Fred. Everyone laughed. He's rich, said Fred, but he doesn't do anything good with his money, and he doesn't enjoy Christmas Day. Every year I'll ask him to our party and wish him Merry Christmas. Perhaps one day he'll understand and give some money to poor Bob Cratchit too. Scrooge and the ghost watched Fred and his friends all evening. Okay, now after that, now they watched two poor families. And then after that, they went to his nephew, Fred. How was, he, how was his reaction? He was laughing. Why is he laughing? Not because he is uh, making fun of his uncle, of the situation itself. He is laughing because, Alem, let me ask you, why do you think he's laughing? Yeah, because he's not having fun with the money he had. All he's doing is gaining money, 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 and nothing more. So where is his family? No, they don't. He doesn't have a family. Do does he has friends? Also, no. Does he save the poor? No, he does nothing with the money. So why why are we taking money? What is the reason behind having money? No question answered by Bob by by uh, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Chapter 4. The Third Ghost Finally, the ghost took Scrooge home, and, as he disappeared, the church clock rang midnight. At once, a new ghost appeared, much more frightening than the other two. It was covered from head to toe in a long black coat. You're the ghost of Christmas yet to come! said Scrooge nervously. The dark ghost said nothing and did not move. I imagine you're going to show me the things which haven't happened yet, Scrooge said, looking at the strange ghost. The ghost silently moved its head a little and pointed with its hand. Okay, now let's say that the ghost the, the dark ghost, the way he looks, the frightening look, is going to be something uh, that we are going to predict the future with. When it's black and frightening, he's talking about what? Yeah, about, Scroo about Scrooge's future. Now, Scrooge is going to suffer from something. 
what is it in the future without having friends and family? Something is going to happen to him. Let's see what will happen to Scrooge later when the ghost takes him on a trip to watch out what's going on or what's going to happen to him later on. Scrooge suddenly found himself in the middle of the city of London. He saw many of the people he worked with every day, changing, buying and selling money. The ghost stopped and pointed to some men standing together talking. I don't know what happened. I only know he's dead, said the first man. What's he done with his money? asked the second man. He didn't give it to me said the first man, laughing. His funeral will be very cheap, said another man. Why? asked the second man. He had no friends. Nobody will go, answered the first man. Now, look at them. They are speaking about what? About his funeral. Funeral means that they are when, when you take a person from the place he lives to bury him in the floor or in the ground. Okay, now he's going to this place without families and friends. He's going on his own. How is he going to feel? Well, you say he's, not, he's dead, I know, but it's very bad after his death when he feels alone and lonely in life and death. This is very bad to him. It's a very bad and complicated situation he put himself in. Scrooge did not understand why the ghost wanted him to listen to this conversation. But he knew the ghost did not answer questions so he did not ask. He looked around, trying to see himself, but on the corner where he usually stood at this time, there was another man doing business. Next, the ghost took him to a bad part of London, which he had never been to before. The streets were small and dark and full of the poorest people. They went into a dirty shop, full of every horrible old thing you can imagine. Metal, bones, books, clothes. Scrooge watched as three people brought things to sell to the shopkeeper. They were from the same dead man's house. The first had some small things, buttons and a pencil case. He doesn't need these now said the first woman, pointing to the towels, silver teaspoons and boots she had. Look, Joe, said the other woman, showing the bed curtains and blankets she had taken from the dead man's bed. Is this shirt from the dead body? asked Joe. Yes, she answered. He doesn't need a new shirt now he's dead. This could happen to me when I die, okay. thought Scrooge. Now... Let me ask you a question. Uh, these two are doing what? Well, yes, they have things in their hand. They 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 look for someone rich and uh, the shirt of him. Uh, imagine that this person is dead and they took these things from him uh, after his death. This is really, really um, um, disappointing to a person. So when he sees all this happening to him, now he's dead, he couldn't stop him. Now what is the need of the money? Nothing, because now they want everything around him. Suddenly, Scrooge found himself in another terrible room. It was very dark, with just a little light coming through the window. There was a bed with no curtains on it, and on the bed, a dead body covered by a sheet. The ghost pointed to the body, as silent as ever. Scrooge looked. Who was this dead man? Why were there no friends or family there to cry over the body, to feel sad that he had died? The ghost still pointed. Scrooge understood it wanted him to look at the face of the dead man, but he could not. Now, why he could not? Because he couldn't I face the truth. I cannot look at this man's face. He, he said cannot Scrooge. face the truth. But that if there's anybody in London who feels something. He cannot face the truth that he is now dead. That's why he couldn't look at it. He felt sorry for himself. Regret 
that he didn't do anything with the money. He has nothing in his life now. He is all dead and no one is around him. And the very expensive things that he had were now gone. They are stolen. Okay, let's continue. Now, this is very important. This is very important part. Look at this. Uh, he doesn't have a family and friend. What do you think he, he he's, he's feeling when he sees people around him? Now he's going to check people around him. Because this man is dead. Show them to me. The ghost took Scrooge into another room. A woman stood up nervously when her husband came in. Is there any news? She asked. When I went to ask him if we could pay the money one week later, he said, an old woman told me he was dead. That's good news, she said. I'm sorry, I mean that now we have time to get the money we have to pay. Okay, now... No, ghost, said Scrooge. Now he feels I want so to bad see someone who's that not even he doesn't have friends and family. No, also he feels that people around him are happy that he is finally dead. Which is really, really regretful. It's something bad when he feels that he's not wanted or loved by anyone. That they are happy that he is dead. I believe he feels so sorrowful and so sad for this. And I myself feel bad for him. How do you feel? Explain to me. Sorry about a death. Not someone who's happy because of one. The ghost took him to Bob Cratchit's house. He saw the Cratchit family sitting quietly around the fire. They were talking about Tiny Tim. I met Mr. Scrooge's nephew, Fred, said Bob, and he said he was very sorry to hear about Tiny Tim. Bob turned to his family. Let's never forget what a good, gentle boy he was, even if he was just a little child. Okay, now that's the future. That's the future. He went to see if Bob Cratchit might be upset with his death or sad, but finally he found out what? That also Bob Cratchit is crying over his son who died, who wasn't helped by Scrooge. So one is happy that he is dead because he's not going to take money from them, and the other one is one and the other one is sad for his son. Nobody is thinking about him. Unfortunately, nobody. No, never, father, shouted all the children. Tell me, ghost, said Scrooge, who was the dead man we saw? The ghost took him to a churchyard. It was a dark place with the walls of houses all around and no flowers on the graves. The ghost pointed to one grave. Before I look said Scrooge. Tell me if the things we've seen are things which will definitely happen or only things which may happen. The ghost stood in silence. Scrooge looked at the name on the grave. It said, Ebenezer Scrooge. Was I the dead man? he asked. The ghost pointed to the grave. Oh, that's then. very sad. Um, now look at the atmosphere. The ghost is black, showing, let's say, he's a symbol of death from the future because every person is going to die. But normally, a, a, new, a, a usual person always has his, his friends and family around him to pray for him, put flower on the grave. But unfortunately, uh, Scrooge has no one around him. The place is dark and empty with no flowers because no one in his life loved him now. Finally, he met the truth. He was so sad and upset that he asked him, what's going to happen to me later? Please tell me it's not true. Please tell me it's not true. 